All right, the next one we're gonna do is fish scales. So to do our fish scale, the first thing we're gonna do is very similar to how we did our brick. And we're just gonna do some horizontal lines that come across. They don't have to be super like even, but somewhat even is, you know, good. Um, yeah, these are definitely not gonna be even, but that's okay. Okay, so you want to do these as kind of guidelines to help keep you straight as far as keeping your scales going across in the same direction. Because what you do not want to do with your fish scales, so what you don't want to do is have a bunch of teeny tiny little things like this. Because whereas, yes, it might be fast to draw it that way. But when you go to add value and to make it look like texture, Miss Harmon's gonna mark it wrong, okay? So leave them fairly large here, and this way we can get plenty of value tone in our scales. And then from here, we're gonna draw a bunch of U's. So you're gonna go all the way down to the line that you drew in this U shape, nice and slow. Nice and slow. Big fat U's. My last one's just going to go whoop off the page, okay? So then your fish scales are kind of like a half drop pattern. So we're going to want to go halfway in between the first one, halfway in between the second one, halfway between the second one to the third one, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to take this, and it's going to go all the way down to my line, curve around, and then come back up. Come down, curve around, and go back up. Come down, curve around, and I can't go up because the center of mine would be about over there, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one so that it goes off the page so it looks complete down and over that way, okay? Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the next one, halfway to the first to the second, halfway to the second to the third, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna come down and up, down and up in my U-shapes. Okay, and that's okay if your U-shapes aren't perfect. They don't have to be perfect. And then for the next one, we're just gonna draw some lines in here because I don't really have enough room to finish. Okay, so you can go back and erase these lines if you want to. You don't really need to because we're gonna shade over them anyway. So it would really just be a waste of time. But now, to make these look like textures and not just a bunch of lines, I have to go in and add my value to it. And then when I do that, I'm gonna start with my second row. It's just cause that's where I like to start. In between where the scales overlap is gonna be nice and dark. Cause I wanna show that there's a shadow where they're layering on top of each other. And then as I come farther down, it's going to get lighter. And just like everything else, when you shade stuff like this, you wanna make sure that you're doing it individually not as a whole. And I wanna make sure I leave a nice highlight around the edge of my scales, because I think it looks nice that way. And it helps them to stand out if you have that nice highlight, okay? And I'm gonna to continue to do that for every scale. Every individual scale. And when I shade, I like to use a nice big circular motion. I feel like it blends the graphite together better as opposed to just the, the left, right, left, right. And again, you can see where I'm leaving my highlights around the edges, okay? Continuing into the next one. I'm gonna try to stay inside my square as much as possible. Can't forget about this guy over here. Okay, and then in my next row, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. It's gonna go dark to light. So where are they overlap? Up in here, it's gonna be dark. So you can see that line that I started with originally, that horizontal line is just kind of faded away 
as I've added that more value onto my fish scales. And I'm still using the chiseled edge of my pencil because I like, feel like it's easier to shade with the chiseled edge as opposed to a pointed edge, which is why doing this kind of stuff with mechanical pencils chooses to be, um, or tends to be, excuse me, not chooses, but tends to be a little more difficult. It's not saying that you can't with a mechanical pencil, it's just saying that it can be more challenging. Some people are quite good at it. Myself, I prefer a wooden pencil. Okay. And again, it's not a ton of pressure that I put on the pencil in order to get the darker value tones. It's just a layering. I do put a little bit of pressure on the pencil in the in-between parts just to kind of, you know, get that dark tone in there a little faster, just to work a little quicker. And then I can kind of like brush it out a little bit so my lines don't look as harsh depending on you know the look you're going for and then continue to do last row i forgot about this little guy over here can't forget him he wants to get shaded too And then if you would like to take your texture and your fish scales a little um, step farther, you can add some cross hatching lines in here, right? So I can do some hefty lines, some textural lines within my shading as well. So my lines are kind of feathered out a little bit on mine. Well, these aren't cross hatching. If you wanted to, you could go in and add some cross hatching lines to get some farther texture where you can just leave like hatching lines here. It's entirely up to you. It just depends on the look you're going for with your scales. And when I shade my top scales, I'm gonna do the same thing, dark to light, a nice highlight on the bottom. 